<clears throat> Excuse me, I'm Zio Spantera of Zio Reviews. Like, favorite, and subscribe. You happy? I fucking said it. Because YouTube is killing every one of the tech reviewers. Um, these are the Bucart A700s. They're an active pair, a self-powered pair, a wireless, essentially, except for power. You always gotta have power. A pair of towers, which is pretty unique in the space. And they're um, the most gemstones in the title, which if you don't know, the gemstones in the title of these videos, the, the diamond, every one of those represents how many thousands of dollars these things are. So usually people see a gemstone, like I'm not gonna look at a thousand dollar audio product. So what happens when you see six of them? This is the most expensive pair of speakers I've ever reviewed. And as you can tell from the wallpaper, link available in the description for the wallpaper hoard, they're probably the most powerful speakers. And not just like, like all raw, like holy shit, uh, you know, power. I mean, these things have strength beyond their construction. Because it's not much to look at. I mean, I could take the covers off of these these triangles here. And these Boreas are like $1,800 for a pair. And we've actually got, this has three six and a halves and a tweeter. This has three, four six and a halves and a tweeter. So shouldn't that mean the triangles can, you know, do more ass kicking? <sighs> well, there's two more hidden back here. So, and every one of those, including the ones in the back are active. There's an amplifier telling those what to do. And we're gonna have to do a thing because, all right, let me explain the Bucart thing. If you've never been to this channel, hi, I'm Zeos. They, they send me things and then I yell about them. Sometimes good yelling, sometimes bad yelling. The bad yelling is these are $6,700 when you convert it from euros to American dollars. And that's if you buy it with the wireless hub. So the way that this system works is Bucart makes speaker. Speaker has amplifier. It takes power in from the wall, and then you get a hub usually with it for a little bit more money that lets it, you hook all your sources up to hub, in this case, a coaxial digital cable. The little antenna then communicates with the speakers and wirelessly, losslessly sends a digital signal that's been feed with a digital signal into digital signal into this. The entire speaker self amplifies, digitally signal corrects, and everything, and then music comes out and it's the best sounding speaker I've ever heard. In this this house, at least, and in most audio shows, this would shit on everything. There's two or three that I think of, like off the top of my head, that would probably compete with these. They're in the $25,000 range. I'm gonna get the elephant out of the room. These are Denmark speakers completely made in China. I'll explain why. This is an understandable move. As a business person, I can understand why. Because these drivers that Bucart has been using are not truly fancy. There is new uh, Bucarts coming out, which I'm gonna try to get a hold of, that have much fancier drivers in them. I forget the brand name, but they're made in Denmark. These are relatively inexpensive Chinese drivers. They're good ones. They wouldn't use them if they weren't. So they were getting the drivers, all fucking, six of them from China. And then the amplifier units is an actual Denmark company that sells the amplifier units, but guess where they're made? China. So now if you have all your drivers are made there and your amplifier units made there, why would you ship all that to the middle of the EU to put in a box and then have to get it out of there using fees and VATs and everything else? So it's way easier. Just make it all in China. And I will, I will vouch for this. The finish on these is perfect. Um, I specifically asked for the white ones. There's something about white tower speakers that just exudes a scent of luxury. Like they could have been the dark wood. They come in black, dark wood, and white. And, or oak. What the hell is it? I forget the actual type of wood. But like the finish, the corners, it is a matte white. It's not shiny. There is no imperfections in it. There are uh, speaker grills, but I don't think anyone's ever going to use them ever. They're little circles that are individually magneted. You rotate them here and they go click on. So if you wanted to prevent Dostum landing in one or all the drivers, you could do that. There's no covers for the back. It comes with four of these each, by the way. Um, so here's the name of the game, science. 
science, forceful physics, literally telekinesis. So what these speakers do, different and better than any of these towers, I've just, I have all my towers lined up here, everything's gonna get rearranged, hope you like the curtains, um, is the same thing that these swans do and the Buchart A500 smaller speakers do is when you have a regular pass speaker like this, you need amplifiers. So you go and get your vintage Japanese made Moran, so your, your Turkish Taxodidus devices, Achilles, or more Japanese vintage receivers, or you know anything you wanna amplify that with, and it sends power. And then there's an internal physical crossover with uh, capacitors and coils, and it changes and it cuts off the frequency so that this frequency isn't cutting of it. And it tries to do all that with mechanical soldered things and you get a speaker and you're done. And people can upgrade the crossovers, etc. So what a speaker like this, a speaker that basically lives 90% of its time in the digital realm. You're sending a digital signal through a digital processor into a digital hub, sending digital Wi-Fi to the units. And then that DSP that's inside of it is keeping everything digital, taking the, the music that you sent it to, ripping it to shreds. It's saying, no, 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 highs. Give me all the highs, take everything else out. The highs are going up here at this delay with this sort of frequency change to fix exactly what's coming out of it. You can't do that with physical, mechanical, old school crossovers. It's taking every section of the music and putting it exactly where it needs to be. Um, there is a section in the box here. So this driver doesn't have any port, it's a sealed box. And then the bottom half, probably a little more than half, is four drivers firing against each other. And it could fire against each other or with each other or just turn the back ones off and have them be passive. So depending on the master tuning, which is gonna be a very large portion of this video, you can make these speakers sound just about any way you'd like. Currently, um, I'll have to, we'll get into it, but the build is just the cleanest slightly angled in case you can't see it on video because it's kind of hard there is a slight tilt to the entire speaker sort of facing it up um, i've got them on these patent pending zeos cinder block stands here adding about eight inches of height that is a personal preference thing you can put these right on the floor and you'll still be just as happy but when i'm sitting here on my little comfy couch with my tv that's way too high because i use it to walk around and review speakers, I needed the audio to be just a little bit taller. And DSP can't make audio go up yet. I have faith in Buchart to make that possible. So the base is actually made of metal. This is a metal base. And on top of that is a slab of silicone rubber, about five eighths of an inch, two centimeters thick, well, 1.8, it's, it's thick. And you literally take the wooden box, you slap the silicone, you slap the metal, you screw it together. So you have a floating system, so it's not transferring down. I have on this particular set, because it comes with either spikes or rubber, rubber feet, rubber feet on top of that, on top of my patent pending um, speaker razors, which are also on furniture sliders, so I can just move them around. Um, I've basically positioned them a few times, a little bit closer to me, a little further to the wall. I just averaged it because it doesn't fucking matter. As soon as you hit play on these speakers, everything you've ever heard is now guilty. Guilty of what? Guilty of not being these. So hold on. Let me, um, I have a remote, I have a remote to control things. I should be able to unpause. We had massive attack playing. That was butterfly caught from massive attack. Oh God, did it break? Hold please. Whoa! To tell me the, 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 the FLIR, the, oh, it's the end of days. I think I'd have a backup remote for this. The FLIR is actually not working. Did this literally it? Oh, I know what's going on. Hold please. I probably have, yeah, I gotta close that. Now it'll work. I had a video open. 
I was catching up on the boys season. I was catching, I was rewatching the boys season two to watch the boys season three. Okay. Power. So when I talk about passive speakers, you have to get an amplifier and amplify it. These are eight watts a channel total. That's what these little, that's what these like $1,800, whatever hell it costs, six three devices are. Eight watts a channel. Beautiful tube amps. These are like 150 watts a channel. The, this VSX D1S is like 120 watts a channel. I believe these contain 500 watts a channel. And by that, I mean the amplifier module has 500 watts that it can put to any speaker driver at any time it needs to. I I'm, think I'm remembering that correctly. I'm sure you could look it up. So there's no, like if you put a passive speaker and it needs a lot of low end, that's where all the power goes. Boom, low end. Trouble is usually pretty easy. But things can shift and move. It doesn't have enough to get that to move when this is moving. So it, especially with something that's a complicated one like the Triangle, which is the best tower speaker I'd ever heard until these. Where the triangle had to balance the tw the tweeter and the sealed five uh, six and a quarter, six and a half, and then the other ones and they had to sort of like get all that power. It has to balance it out with a a, a non smart crossover. And it was like okay, these put the power wherever they needed, whenever it needs it, all the time, and then you die. But let me change tracks. <laughs> If you haven't listened to the sound demo for this, which you probably are seeing this first, there is a sound demo linked in the description. It's on a separate channel in case it gets demonetized and blocked. I don't want it to happen on this channel. That I had the microphones about here, which is way far away. I record, you know, music. Music that I know won't get me banned on YouTube, but usually I don't get paid for that shit, like ever. So I just put them out here. I played some music and... I was editing it and I couldn't tell the difference between the source and the microphones recording it. Because that's how good these are at just sending shit to your ears. So that's, by the way, Cash Flow by, by Major Laser. I'll skip forward to, the, to this part. Um, what? Did anyone hear the... Where's the subwoofer, Zio? So you have a subwoofer hooked up, you, you bastard? No. One of the one of the things about having five active six and a half and a six and a half, right? Five and a quarter, six and a halves. Five active six and a halves is that you could make them do mm, high twenties hertz response. You can't do that with a with a regular tower. You could try to force it out of there, but something like like these JBLs or the clips here, you still have to get mid range out of this bit. And then this, and then whatever low end, and it's, you're just throwing a lot at it. This has four dedicated, basically, bass drivers. The rears don't ever have to produce mid-range, but the fronts could a little bit, just like, like maybe most mid-range, a little bit of mid-range, no mid-range. The amount of twisting of the fucking sound that the DSP can do, completely, everything that's audiophile, fucking separate amps, separate tubes, oh, all analog domain, fuck that. Fuck it, right in its ass. I want as much DSP as you can shovel into things. That's why the Swan M300 Mark IIs are basically the best speaker ever, as these are better speakers, but those are $900, which is a lot, but affordable. Honey, we just spent $1,100 on a TV. We can see that, that's one sense. I wanna hear it too. Spend less than the TV on a set of Swans, and then you have sight and sound. Next, all you need is feel, which would be a subwoofer or a comfy couch, taste, which is a popcorn machine, and smell. I don't know, buy something that smells good, but I guess candles, probably buy candles. So as far as cost goes, price to performance, $4,500 for those with the hub, $900 for these, and then going from a bookshelf to a tower, for another like two thousand dollars is is actually it's starting to twist my very cheap nature because once you've listened enough once you've listened enough to these speakers 
with the tuning you prefer. We'll get to it right now. These are the end game speaker, the end game. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to describe master tunings to you. We're going to we're going to we're going to mi minimize Tatsumaki or we're going to cover her. So I discussed all about it's it's digital. It cuts up the audio and puts it where it needs to be. But there's multiple options for that. See this guy? He's telling you all about it. You can watch that video. The A500s, which are the smaller speakers there, I gotta add more lights here to light this up eventually, um, have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven different tuning options for the three powered speakers that are in that. The A700 master tunings is neutral stock, high pass 60 hertz, extra detail, which is on there right now, warm, wall filter, the theoretical, the theoretical cardioid, and the theoretical cardioid with more bass. So these are all flavors of this speaker that you can load. And it's not super difficult to load them on there. It's just not like, wee. Now, uh, there is an app. There is a Bucart app that can hook up to the hub and control the volume, but it can't switch these internally. I wish it could. I think the next five years, that'll be a thing. You'll open up your Bucard app. You'll pick specifically which one of these, and you could read all about them in the link in the description. Um, I'll quickly go over what I've what I've learned. Because th th these speakers went from like very competent, very capable, but really expensive speakers with the neutral stock, which apparently gives the speaker a very well balanced and works great overall, give good balance at very deep bass and SPL levels, sound pressure levels. There are... Uh, Neutral stock, I would have given these an eh review. That same thing happened when I reviewed the A500s. I got them, they were expensive. I love the passive uh, S300s and S200s. These are the S400s that have come out. The S400s have come out. There's both sets of S400s down there. <clears throat> love those speakers. So the A500s came out, the first active set, and I'm like, all right, these sound okay. They just sounded okay. And then I found out about the master tunings, changed it once, best speaker I'd ever heard. So I knew as soon as I took these out of the box, started using them, give them their break in period. You know, everyone says 30 to 500 hours or 50 to 150 hours, whatever, just use speakers. Just use them. You want to break them in, break them in, just fine. But I knew, I knew the time would come when I had to come over here and download every single fucking one of these filters and install them. So here's how you install them, because currently we're on extra detail, which adds a little extra sparkle, um, to the point where I've had some music sound absolutely phenomenal on the classical music, even though you think classical music, you think highs, like really, like holy shit, it is pulling, we gotta get to the sound eventually and the shape of it and what it fucking does, but we're still talking about master tunings because it's one of those things you have to pick and choose. So the way you change master tunings, and I'm going to do it right now. I'd love to get it to be playing while I'm doing this, but I'm going to avoid that. Um, each speaker comes with a little boot cart USB key. These come with everything now. And on it, I've downloaded... It doesn't come with the, with the tunings on it because I want you to get the freshest ones off the website. So you go to the website... You open up every single one of the things. It opens a Google Drive, it downloads, and it's just a, a specific type of file. I forget the actual file extension, but what I did is I made a folder on this USB key. I put all the things in the folder, and then whichever one I want to load, you take to the root of the USB drive. So I'm going to put back my favorite tuning, the theoretical. Just the theoretical, not the cardioid, not the cardioid with more bass, not the extra, not the extra detail, not the warm, not the stock for sure, the theoretical. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn the speaker off, plug in the USB key. I'm going to take the camera off my head so you can see this. We're going to turn the speaker back on. It's going to do a loop and that's it. This now has the newest uh, thing set to it. And um, he'll add more, just like the A500s. When I did the A500s, there was like three. Now there's 11 different tunings for those because they're just sitting in Denmark, twiddling their thumbs going, can we make these sound better? 
let's make another let's make another master tuning and they have to go back and forth with the amp manufacturer and have it processed and redone so we'll do the same thing on this side off in on spin take out i have it labeled 700 because i got the 11 ones of the 500 on this other one it's because i'm going to end up putting the 500s back up and giving those like a half re-review so now turn them off and back on you got to give them an, uh 45 seconds to reconnect to the hub and now if we play that same exact sound or music it's going to sound completely different and i haven't heard this tuning in over a week because i had to play with all the tunings so i had the stock tuning for like four or five days and i'm like all right cool cool i guess it's cool put on the theoretical first with my first switch shit my pants my friend dan the it man i keep mentioning him in reviews please check out his channel on youtube it man 496 um doesn't give a fuck about audio uh, he has this friend me and all this stuff to listen to and he's liked like two things ever he heard these speakers with the theoretical tuning and had to really consider not selling his bmw like seriously he's ne he sat here and he was going through like chip tunes on youtube he's like i can't believe i could hear everything nothing is kraut like there's never a point where it can't there's never a point where it can't do something. I've only hit its limits like three times. And when I did it, my heart was pounding so fast because I thought I was going to die anyway. So now, uh, we should probably talk, pause that for a second, about how the actual controls work. These speakers on the back, if you saw with the video when I had it down there, there is an XLR plug on the back of each one of these speakers. You don't have to get the hub. You could spend less. You could spend 6,000 euros instead of 6,300. You're gonna spend 6,300. But should you be like, no, 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 Zeos, I've got my own, my own DAC. I wanna just feed it signal with XLR. You can do that. You send it an XLR signal, it'll take your analog, convert it back to digital, do its DSP thing and shit out music. Just, just fling it like a monkey at the zoo, just right at your face. I prefer to avoid that analog to digital conversion and send it digital to digital to digital to, to wireless digital, and it's good. Uh, the remote control is Wi-Fi. It's not infrared. There's no blaster. You can put this thing in a, and go to the bathroom over there. That's out of the room and still control the volume and change everything. Metal remote has a play, pause, next track, last track, which is good for the Wi-Fi connectivity and the Bluetooth and probably USB. I've not actually hooked this up USB so that you wouldn't even need anything but computer USB done. But yeah, look how many options that box back there. Do I have the extra one? I do. I have the one from the A500s just sitting on the floor, so much more convenient to pull out. Box plastic. They used to charge way more for this. I'm glad they dropped the price. Apparently there's another big one, which you have to look at, but you have a line in of left and right analog. You've got three opticals. Two of the doors, by the way, broke off these. Just saying that happened. Um, an HDMI input, which you'd use as a secondary, you can't pass through. So that's always a strange thing. If you have a computer, you could put that in there, but it's only stereo. There is a surround sound version of this coming out. There's a surround sound version of this. Wireless surround sound. It's going to be amazing. Um, your coaxial input, your USB input, a service USB, your pairing button, and that, and a little weasel light, and a little antenna. And that's it. You get this cheap plastic box. This remote control connects to said cheap plastic box with the pairing button. Put you back on the floor. Uh, you get, it, it's lit up, it's lit, fam. You hold the circle. There's a up, down, left, right, and OK circle. I actually don't know what the OK does, because it's got mutant power up here, so OK doesn't do anything there are multiple steps within each of these leds that comes on so the third one is like one two three and then the fourth one so one two three and then the fifth one so you get three steps on top of the like 10 steps you get to switch back and forth between any of the inputs you want instantly you turn them off it clicks this it clicks off the actual amplifiers and that the hub stays on all the time um, it's very nice metal. I did wrap the other one I had with a little bit of a felt back here so it doesn't slide off my lap. I like to put remotes on my knee and it just goes, whoosh, falls off. So now back to just shuffling a, a couple tracks. Hold on. Oh, we're back, baby. Oh, we're fucking back. It's been a week. 
it's been a solid, maybe, maybe longer, eight or nine days. Because there was a couple days where I wasn't down here. That is the theoretical. So let me go back to the... Where did the mouse go? It's over there. I'm going to go back to this, and I'm going to read you the description of the theoretical, which is the master tuning I have on this current currently. This gives a speaker that is very well balanced and works great overall. Bullshit words. Next. It gives a good balance of very deep bass and SPL levels. Bullshit words. Next. <clears throat> This setup is what's called a three and a half way design. Basically, every DSP trick in the book to achieve the perfect speaker on paper. Not much has been adjusted from, listen, from listing test here. It's a science-based speaker that follows Floyd Tools research and philosophy. If you look for a razor flat response, this is it. I don't know who Floyd Tool is, but that motherfucker stereo must have sounded amazing. Because turning this on to the theoretical, which by the way is just an amazing thing to call something. There's a wall filter, if you move real close to a wall, wall filter. Warm, reduce the treble. I didn't hate it on warm. The problem is warm and extra detail are all derivatives of the standard normal, scrolling up, neutral stock. Neutral stock with a high pass of 60 in case you're doing surround sound stuff. You don't want this to throw the deep bass. You throw that on, that literally cuts bass. Extra detail is just neutral stock with more detail. Uh, warm is just neutral stock with warm. Wall filter is just neutral stock with um, the rear speakers uh, not reflecting. So when you get to the theoretical here, that's when you start getting away from that stock sound and into the shit that's just fucking crazy. Um, before we move on to talking about how amazing these speakers are at this point, because right now they're set up in basically, I'm going to spend seven grand mode. Let's talk about the cardioid and the cardioid with more bass setups, because these are interesting. I used them the last three days. The cardioid and the cardioid, uh, our way is what the actual thing is called. Basically the rear, it removes bass from the unit and it unlocks any protection. Because with a DSP, with a digital controlled speaker, it knows what your volume is set to and it knows the limitations of the driver and if it throws exactly 75 watts this fast, that driver is going to pull out and then fly onto the floor. So it can never go past 74 watts to get the driver, whatever it's, whatever it's controlling at the point. With the cardioid, it basically takes off the safeties and you're like, oh cool, it'll be super badass. No, fuck no, fuck no. Because you can very easily, it says it right here. Um, be careful, you as this tuning can hurt the woofers if you play too loud. And too loud on the cardioid was, normally I don't play higher than two from the top. So here's the controls, right, right, ready, ready? There's maximum, never ever play maximum. You drop it till there's two lights off. Two lights off completely, you're pretty safe. It's gonna be loud as hell. I mean, loud as hell on any of the the cardio on, on the theoretical or the stock. You can go with two two lights off. You put on the cardioid, four lights off. Has to be because you will literally hear the drivers hitting the edge of their excursion, and it's the most terrifying thing ever. What the cardioid does is instead of having the drivers like compress like this to make more bass. They move in in sequence, but like slightly delayed. I think that's how it works. I was trying to like visualize it because it removes a lot of the impactful bass, but it's much more natural. It's trying to almost emulate an open baffle speaker. So it's just like it was very, very free sounding. But when you lack the low end and you couldn't put it up, so it was for like very, very quiet listening. You're, you're good. It's like, OK, this is. This is not to impress your friends. This is because you like the way this sounds with the, because it's it's sort of throwing the sound back and it's washing forward. And then the one with more bass, which is the one their style, was the same thing, but with more bass. And therefore I had to go down from four lights off to five lights off. So even quieter, more low end. It was a little bit more like capable, but I, you know, do not for parties, holy shit drivers will just crash. So if you buy these speakers and you spend $7,000, I guarantee you, you're going to spend a day or two with each one of these. See what you think about the, the theoretical cardioid and the theoretical cardioid with more bass. Me personally, 
you throw this fucking thing on there like we have, and you never take it off. So I'm going to minimize this down now so we can go back to her. Actually, before we walk away from the browser, that apparently exists. So we have this little guy. This is our boy, which is only $300 extra, for, or 300 euros extra. There's the silicon pad, by the way. For $700 extra, or 700 euros extra, you can get the Primair SC15 in black or silver. I didn't even know this existed. I wasn't even sure this was an option. But it's a much nicer metal box versus that. With trigger ins and outs, your PC Mac connection, another USB, a network port. It looks like it's got digital outputs also, so you can pack it. It says made in Sweden. Yeah, it says manufacture primary Limstenskagen 7 21616 Limhang, Sweden. So that's why that's more money. And I'm going to be like, yo, Mass, send me one of those. Because that will connect to these as well. And it has analog ins and outs instead of just ins. It's got digital ins in and out. And I'm just assuming it has better, like that thing's plastic and doesn't feel like it's worth a lot. That's metal and has a third leg. Uh, here's your finish options, by the way. The obviously best is white. You could see the, the, the slant on it on the website if you click the link. Then you get the black, which is very, very, not boring, but understated as hell. And then the wood, which is always a little bit more. Yes. All right. So it's 200 euros more to get the walnut. And it's 200 euros less to get the black or white. So there you go. So now minimizing that, back to Tatsumaki, putting the mouse down, pulling the remote control out of my pocket. Um, I want you to shuffle and impress me. Ready? Oh, wait, God, where's our volume? I'll put up a little bit more. Boom. Next. I'm sold. Give me two pairs. This is uh, Hans Zimmer Supermarine from the Dunkirk soundtrack. And the Dunkirk soundtrack builds up very slowly, and copyright is still a thing, so I'm just going to jump to... I don't get, like, literal physical chills from sound. Not often. It's happened before. But there is... The word is not presence. I want to say the word presence. Presence is like, I feel the presence of a spirit. I feel the presence of my poor little baby cat Chewbacca in my soul. This is not a presence. This is like when you go to a haunted house, but it turns out it's actually a haunted house, and there's like 50 dead fucking zombie spirits right behind you, and you get that like hair on your neck stands up. It's like, <gasps> that's what these do to you if it's sound specifically with something like Hans Zimmer. Like, this doesn't make any logical... I'm doing, like, Lewis Black-style fucking handshaking now sense. How are you this loud, this clear, this detailed, and this controlled? All the things you wanted of a speaker. All the things. Every one of these... Spe every speaker is just... You, you pale in comparison. The, the true power, the Tatsumaki levitate, make a fucking meteor appear and then kill a dinosaur, sort of like, how did you do that? That's what these do. That's why that wallpaper, it was like, oh, obviously Tatsumaki, just that's it. it it's, there's no way any YouTube video or words that come out of this half Italian, Irish, Polish man's mouth is going to explain to you what this feels like. Because I listen to speakers all the time. I listen to those $2,500 triangles at the same time as these. I do. I basically had them both, and I, I listened to them both, and that was a fucking mistake. Because I knew the triangles weren't these, so I put these to the side. I listened to those for just a straight week. I enjoyed the shit out of those. Some of the best passive bookshelves you could ever fucking buy. Hi, Megamine. And as soon as I was done, the minute I was done, put them on the side. We gotta get back to our, wait. Every song, no matter what it is. Handsome Family, My Beautiful Bride. There's just, there's sound everywhere. Because it's shooting speakers out the back. And it's shooting speakers out the front. 
And those tweeters, if you don't know, because I don't, I, I've done so many book art reviews now. These tweeters have this huge waveguide that's got this very specific shape. And the reason for that is it's so that when you measure the six and a half, when they make speakers, they take a microphone and do this to go, okay, measure, okay, measure, okay, measure, okay, measure, okay, measure, probably like 70 times across the span to see how the speaker throws sound and if the frequencies dip. And what they did is they designed a waveguide so that when they measure this across the pan, it matches that across the pan. So automatically, the, the passive S400s had this magic about them that like no matter where you were it sounded cohesive and, and perfect it was really really great really fucking great then they made an active version of that with dsp corrections and fucking time alignments and shit and it's like holy fuck and now let's just add two more drivers to the front two more drivers to the back a bigger box and i don't know we'll sell that and that's where we're at right now all of that the slight angle back the crazy horn tweeter the separate six and a half and then two in the front and a different chamber in the back that's all controllable and all knowing and all seeing hairs in the back of my neck every time I unpause it Mr. Robot which one is this Joanna Fishes dot wave is the name of the track and it's just this like like people ask me, is it a warm speaker? Ooh, I didn't load the warm profile, but but is it a is it a dark speaker? It does shit to sound in a room. And this is without room correction. You can get an iPhone and turn on the app and do a thing where you circle around the room and it picks up the the the, the frequency lulls and it tries to uh, uh, you know edit them out. I did that for the A500 with my friends borrowed iPhone. I didn't like that much. It's not as good a thing as like a Dirac correction. So I didn't do it for this. And frankly, with the curtains up, with the very, very cushy, soft ceiling filled with insulation and carpet down, I don't think these need room correction. My room is pretty fucking perfect. And it's it's got just enough reflection off that back wall to keep it like alive in here. But there's like behind here is like seven feet to a wall. And behind there is like 35 feet to a wall. So, and then I, there's no walls there. There's walls way the fuck back there and then just curtains and curtains and soft things. This, per, this place is perfect. This is the best listening space it's ever been, at least in my life. So when you play something, all right, now I'm just gonna get creeped out because Mr. Robot. I want, I want every person watching this video to be in this room with me. Because there's no way you're going to understand what the fuck's going on. I, I actually have watched, when I did the sound demo of these, I obviously recorded with the camera and I had the good microphones. And the camera audio was so good. And I'm like, well, that solves it then. Because people watching this review, the one I'm recording now, a couple days later, you're going to hear shit that these speakers are doing through a fucking GoPro. And you're going to know. You're not even going to need to go to the sound demo. I recommend it highly. But none of that's going to prepare you because even if you had a set of like these, listening to the sound demo of these, it's going to be missing something. You need to be right in front of them with pure audio and just next track, next track. They're singing up here. There's, there's like vocals here, but then depthy. There's depth that I can't, that you can't get from speakers. You just can't get it. I've had a couple speakers that, are, you know, I said it with the triangles. Triangles made sounds happen from here to here. Like there was a, it was forward and backwards. Very, very rare to do on any speaker, passive, active, or otherwise. They do something, those triangles with that tweeter, with that magic tweeter, because they have a magic tweeter too. They do something that just makes it like, oh my God, it's got such depth. Now take that depth that was happening in the middle of the triangles and expand it 50% forward and backwards and then make that depth go all the way to the left and up and back here. This It's like the, like a, a stack of 100 four by eight sheets of plywood where sound can come from anywhere in that fucking stack. It's dumb. These are dumb. 
These are, the, these are dumb. And there's nothing that's passive that could... I have no faith, none, in any passive tower beating these. Because you can't. You don't have the control. You're lacking the control. Klipsch. For the, Klipsch had the Klipsch 5s. I love those little powered speakers. They were 800, now they're 500. Zeos linked to Klipsch 5s on Amazon for $500. Amazing speakers. Little five and a quarter, little horn, DSP corrected, so much low end, so much potential. And yeah, while Klipsch has good speakers, I was always like, what if they made heresies or fortes that were self-powered where they could DSP correct, they could do time alignments, they could really get in there and fine tune all the drivers to be like this, like this with like the Klipsch drivers. Oh, what is happening? I, it's, I'm eight seconds. Definitely, I'm getting demonetized, if not blocked and banned from YouTube because fuck them. But that's um the Doors. That's Abalone's Adiago in G minor, which you don't hear that Doors song. You always hear L.A. Woman. You always hear you know other, break on through, but you never hear. Oh, God Almighty. I, I'm going to have to, as soon as this review is over, the moment it ends, the first thing I'm doing is I'm unplugging these speakers and sliding the fuck out of the way. Because i got to take a break. Because I've got other speakers. There's actually a lot of speakers here now. I've got those weird Klipsch um, Pro speakers, which have no low end on purpose. I've got Swan M5As upstairs, which I don't really like upstairs. I got to bring them down here. I got to see if they sort themselves out in a much more you know, appropriate room. But... These things are fucking ruining the bell curve by like 30%. Like everyone was getting a 70. Like yeah, was, all these speakers now went from like a 95 to a 70. Because some asshole is getting like a 99 to 100. These are 100. These are 100 speaker. And I don't say that lightly. And if you buy them and you're pissed at me, you're going to come back to this and complain. Complain to me completely. If you own these or have heard them and you think I'm fucking lying to you, I invite you. Invite you to email me, Percy. Here's my phone number. Get in the back of my car. We'll take a drive together. You will not be disappointed. You can't be. Literally can't. I gotta, I gotta just... Okay, so. Incubus. String Quartet. Wish you were here. You can get right here with that. You'll die, but it's... You don't hear the different drivers because whatever the DSP is doing is offloading this into this with overlap because they know how the physics of it work. And whatever is overlapping from here to here is overlapping. So it just sounds like a big consistent wall of sound. Whereas that would be like, all right, it's cut. And then we take it, we put it up here and we can kind of get to things. But if you just load a fucking new profile, you can do anything you want. Do anything you want to make it sound as good as you need to with the drivers at hand. The kick drum is right in the middle of this. It's just kick drum. Kick drum. The bass response to this, I've only gotten the drivers to add, to misbehave twice. Whenever I'm over the two blanks uh, rule, which I set for myself, and what if it's like real, like like Run the Jewels? So what's the bassiest song Run the Jewels has? Is um, it's either Angel Duster. What's the fucking hold on? Run the Jewels, Killer Mike and LP. Really, it jumped to Killer Mike instead of ugh, Blockbuster Night's good, but it's like. You know, these act like there's a sub and there isn't one. And it's better than a sub because it's faster than a sub because subs are, you know, big boxes that do this to make low end. And this is four six and a halves. You don't buy a sub and get one that has four six and a halves. That's just not what you do. But that's what this is. It's basically a sealed box with four six and a halves that are fucking isobaric push pulling but on outsides of the box and it's dumb these are dumb these are the dumbest speakers on earth everything about them every horn every guitar synth note we could just keep switching between tracks all night 
Oh good, epic score. I don't have to stop this. I wish it was singing an epic score. I can play all the epic score I want. Did anyone hear that? I'm just gonna sit down. Wait for it, it's gonna happen again. Here it comes. Ready, three, two, one. These speakers are alive. Like a dragon. Like a dragon is here. Epic score tracks. Oh, I don't know if I could show it here because it was from an episode of a TV show. Um, I was watching Tokyo Vice on here because I literally set up my, um, my old couch from my old apartment, my old day bed from my old apartment, my old TV from my old apartment, my old fireplace from my old apartment, my old speaker stands from my old apartment, two windows in the back. Just like my old apartment, this is my old apartment, Little Narberth. So I've been coming down here, I closed the ceiling up finally, I got rid of the fucking fiberglass that was falling on my head, and I've just been watching TV shows. So I put on, I've been just, you know, every once in a while I'll either watch upstairs with the Fortes on the on the OLED, or come down here and just kick my feet up on the couch, because who gives a shit, it's a fucking, it's a fucking basement couch. Look, I could step all over it. Um, I was watching Tokyo Vice, and there's a scene in I think episode seven? Where um, one of the one of the crime bosses, one of the one of the um, wow, what's the name of the Japanese mafia? I literally watched Tokyo Vice. I need to know this. Yakuza. One of the Yakuza bosses has one of his favorite whores, and he's kind of upset at her, and so he gives her a steak because he's like, "Oh fuck, it, you eat it," because it's overdone. And he puts a piece of meat down on her plate in front of him, and I'm watching on these speakers, and I have this profile loaded. And he, I don't know if it's just specifically the way that the scene was shot, if it, they did this to it on purpose, or if it was just because of these speakers, but she, in dead silence, no background music, no people in the restaurant, just her, a knife, a fork, and her mouth. She cuts the fucking steak on the plate. And you know that sound of like cutting a, a steak on a porcelain plate, like that, ooh, no? You hear the, oh, no. And that wasn't the thing that got me. The thing that got me was she picks up this little piece of steak and puts it in her mouth and you hear the fork against her teeth. I heard the fork tap her teeth and I cringed. And I'm like, I'm sure this is in the show, but I've never heard detail in anything visual that has been to that level. I'm going to blame the speakers for it. I backed it up. I've never gone back. It wasn't like, oh, sexually, girl eating a steak is hot. It kind of is. But I backed it up, and I just listened to it again. And I, I focused on it in every little minute detail. And it wasn't like I heard it out of here. I heard it right here, like specifically where the plate was, and then up in her mouth, like here, because it just moved the sound. per Unbeatable speakers for the time being. Tatsumaki background. If you don't know One Punch Man, go watch One Punch Man season one. You don't have to watch season two. It, it's still okay, but it's like, don't watch season two. Watch season one. But yeah, no, Tatsumaki and her un, undivided power, like unquestionable fucking nasty power. Let's just shuffle now. Let's see what happens. Nuclear meltdown, still epic score. What is that right there? You see what that is, the problem is with regular speakers, if you give it all the power it needs to make a speaker move that fast, you're probably gonna die from everything above those speakers. But this speaker just knows, oh, I'm at 75% volume. Throw this much power at bottom drivers. Oh, you can use more? Just give it more. Make it perfect. Th 
This is Epic Score Nuclear Meltdown Remix. I kind of want to play Quake on these. Or Doom. You know what? Doom. Oh my god. There's just sounds swirling. It isn't like sound here, then sound here, then... It just sounds swirling through the air. Next track. Grand Budapest Hotel. Great soundtrack. Don't want to play too much of it. Psycho Pass. Great show, but not season two. Pause. Next track. Ooh, Elliot Smith. Bye. Figure eight. Very dark, very distant. Like, I can't... There's not a single track that I've played on these where I'm like, nah, next. This one doesn't sound good. Because even if it's not a well-recorded track, the absolute cleanliness and presentation of the sound through these makes it interesting to listen to. You go, oh, I hear what they did wrong. Oh, it's completely in mono. And, and obviously there's a bass cut at, you know... 300 hertz and below. I could totally hear that. I can pull it out of thin air. Fucking right out of thin air. I almost wouldn't say, like, if you're like, oh, should you mix and master on these? No. Because everything you do, every pile of shit you do would sound amazing. And you would release a pile of shit. I think you need more critical speakers than this. These are the headphones that make everything sound good. These are the Meze lyrics. But somehow more more in control, more powerful, and more in your face. And I don't compare headphones to speakers, but I understand headphones more that make everything sound good versus speakers. Some things, some speakers are just like, this is shit, it's always shit, it's gonna sound like shit, it's better. And these are, this is gonna sound fucking amazing. So long as you're on the theoretical, if you buy these and leave them on the stock tuning, you're just gonna be okay with them. You're just gonna be okay. You buy them, Take them off the stock tuning, put them on the theoretical, whatever the hell they have out at that point, the three and a half way, and just calm. Tech Master PEB. Tech Master PEB. I'd love to just play that intro, but it's gonna. Actually, wait. I know there's a song on here that I'm using now for um. What is the Techmaster bass chasm? I'm just gonna put this on. This sounds good enough. Uh, yeah, no, that's dumb. That's that's dumb. That's officially it's if they're dumb. They're dumb. And it's not just bass. Like if it was just bass, oh, these are the bass used speakers ever. They're not worth seven, nearly seven grand. Mm -mm, 6,800 or what the fuck they are with the with the hub. No, 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 not for just bass. It's everything. They look amazing. They do highs better than anything more controlled. They have the best imaging. They have vocal clarity and everything. Every fucking checkbox down the line. How loud do they get, Zio? So I want to make sure they get loud. Oh, they get fucking loud. Ooh. In this part of Africa, we all have a say. Whenever something back. I'm there. I'm in the stage listening to Book of Mormon. This is dumb. These are dumb speakers. Buy them. Don't buy them. I don't care. As long as I feel like I'm being as honest as possible in this video, I'm going to be happy with that. There's... <laughs> I'm trying to think of ways to improve this. What's next? What's next? What do you do to, to add on? You don't need bigger drivers because the bass is plenty. I guess a, y, a, Wi-Fi, a um, Wisa subwoofer to do like... 8 hertz to 27 or wherever these cut off. I think it's 29 hertz. It's either 27 or 29 hertz. These end. That's fucking low. We just throw our hands to the sky and... These are the best speakers. These are the best speakers that I've ever listened to. I, yeah, these are the best speakers I've ever listened to. Fat Boy Slim Love Island, by the way. I had, I'm just if this video doesn't get completely blocked, if there's a weird skip, if you've gone through a weird skip and you're here, there's no music playing right now. That's because the music fucked me over and YouTube's a pile of shit. But um, oh my god. 
Oh, I love this song. Fat Boy Slim Love Island with that fucking tink tink. It sounds like someone's banging a can inside the speaker. I, 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 I want to end this review so I can listen to them a little bit more. A little bit more. I said I was going to throw them on the side right away. No, a little bit more. I'm just going to give it like another night. I'll watch, I'll watch some TV right here. Because I just, they're so fucking addictive. I don't think anyone who buys these that has the money, don't fucking sell your family car and tell your kids they can't go to college because you want to buy these speakers. Goals. Set a goal. This is a goal. I want to buy a sports car. Zio's Pantera. I have a, a Chevy I paid 15000 for. My Caprice I got with, low, with decently low mileage and I ended up spending like 10 grand more in it to make it cool. I bought that taco for like thirteen five, which for an 06 taco with a hundred and some odd thousand miles seems high, but tacos hold their value. They're probably worth a billion dollars now. I have a goal of a fucking aerial atom. That's my goal. I don't have it. I don't have the money to just go out and say, here's $65,000 for a used beat up one, but that's a fucking goal. You set a goal that's higher than you've an uncomfortable goal. This is an uncomfortable goal for most people. Matt's going to send these. He's never taken these back. He knows I'm good for the fucking... He knows that they're going to show up multiple times in the background and it's worth his money to, to lose it. Even though if he, they're across seven, they'll really cost like three. He's pocketing the rest. So that's how business works. But this should be a goal, a far-reaching goal for people. Don't, don't set your dreams too low. If your dreams are too easy to fucking grasp, you won't fight and get past that point. You'll be like, oh, I want to have a burger today. I went to McDonald's and had a burger. I guess my goals are done. No, 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 no. Your goals need to be much higher than that. You don't have to always achieve them because wherever the fuck you stop after the struggle, you're going to look back and go, holy shit, I can't believe I climbed this far. These are I've climbed this far speakers. These are speakers you put, you mark it down on your fucking to-do list. Buy Bucart A700s. $6,700 or $7,000, whatever they are. And you just mark that down and you keep throwing money in the swear jar. You cocksucking motherfucker. You just keep watching Stallone and Demolition Man to get inspiration. Just fill that swear jar up because one day you might have these. Just like one day I might have the fucking frame of an aerial out of my garage and then cover it with a Hey Go Girl waifu stickers. That's a goal. Why an aerial atom and not just like a Miata? Because when you go to a car show, everyone's going to go, that is an aerial atom. And these are Bucard A700s. And there is no way you're fucking confusing these for any Miata. Oh, Bakamonogatari, that'll definitely get me blocked worldwide. Can't do that shit anymore. Foo Fighters. Even Foo Fighters sounds good. And Foo Fighters sounds like shit. Anyway. Like there's highs and then there's like, I've got to be, I got to end this review. It's going to be an hour of me just jerking off on them before I actually might actually have to do that. <sighs> Links to these in the description. There is no affiliate link. I don't make a penny if you buy a set. All I know is Mads is going to keep sending me new things because the, he keeps making great things and they keep giving him great reviews. So if you don't believe me, Find someone that you can trick into buying them, then you listen to them at their house, and then come back here and report. Because there's nothing else I could do. These don't show up at Best Buy at Magnolia. Although, if they did, they would be the only thing sold at Best Buy at Magnolia. So, these, link to these in the description. Link to the wallpaper hoard. I can't link the actual wallpaper, but there's a code. If you want to put an imager, you could do it. I can't direct link for reasons, fucking YouTube reasons. Um, Patreon and subscribe star. So when I'm not buying uh, speakers. I will be buying a whole bunch of stuff coming up real soon. Uh, that might have actually started already. I'm not sure where this ends up in the time frame of things, but there's going to be like a big spending spree I'm going on. Because companies send me shit. And that's great. But I don't want to rely on that. I want to spend the money that people have invested in me back and review things and then invest it back in them and put it shit in yard sales and try to bounce that money back to spend it again. It's gonna try to make a cycle happen. So Patreon and Subscribestar where that's gonna be a thing. Um, see reviews early, participate in yard sales. I will not be yard sailing the A700s, I'm sorry. Um, nor the A500s, nor the Swans. Basically I need all this stuff for decoration around here. Um, but everything else that I've reviewed, smaller amps, headphones, DACs, DAPs, all over there, 
those things go in the yard sale or smaller speakers. I would do those subs, like one of those subs would definitely go, but I don't have the boxes and it's a million dollars to ship. So see reviews early, participate in yard sales, first to the 10th of every month. Listen to lossless sound demos. The one sound demo, if you wanted to hear it lossless and actually have it mean something, would be the A700 sound demo. Fuck the headphone sound demos. That, those are a joke compared to how these recorded. Um, do that if you're a $5 supporter. For $10, you get into the private behind the scenes Telegram chat where you could ask me any questions you want. She's just staring at me. It's weirding me out, turning me on, I don't know. Um, so $10 a month, private behind the scenes Telegram chat. You get into a lifetime swap meet channel. So once you're in the $10 chat, that will, you know, they check every three months to make sure you're still an up, up to date patron. But you get into a swap meet channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear, and you're in that forever because I'm too lazy to kick anyone out. And then after that, Hi-Fi Guides, the forum is now back up and running. We've got the email issue sorted out. You could actually sign up for the site and get your confirmation. It's been a fucking nightmare. Don't worry. I'm going to mention it every video because it's too fresh in my head. Um, so, yeah, that's all sorted. Check out the Hi-Fi Guides forum. They're also going to be involved in that spending spree. I don't know what to call it. The Z spends. Z spends. Spends with a Z, maybe. Um, thank again to Maz for sending these out. Um, they took forever. I knew I was getting them for like a year and a half. And they just, it was like, oh, yeah, no, nah, nah. And then they showed up and I'm just like, yeah, boy. I've had these upstairs too. Then you need them in a space. You still need it. They're not miracle workers. They can't work at a cave, but you put them in like a man cave that's well damped and they will change your fucking life. They're certainly going to be the thing that I compare everything else to. And that sort of fucks it. Everything's fucked. So uh, I'll see you all next time. Check out the sound demo. Check out other videos. Subscribe and fucking click the bell. I hate to say it, but I'm getting screwed real bad. If you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, please get, throw a dog a bone. Because it's just like, that's literally, I get like 40% of my views are just people who aren't subscribed consistently watching. And I, it, it's, it sucks because you kind of like, yeah, I'll just check Zeos' videos manually. Please hit the hit the fucking subscribe button. I'm sorry. I never want to ask this again, but I'm gonna have to. I might even have to pay someone to make me thumbnails. Which maybe we'll start with these. I got a guy who's gonna make thumbnails to see if they're like crazy. If thumbnails are hot. Um, maybe I'll send him the Tatsumaki picture. He could add that in there. Anyway, I'm done. You're done. We're done. We're Zeo Spentera of Z Reviews, and maximum volume. Not maximum volume, but shuffle me a good one, baby. Yes, 100% yes.